All right, uh, I'll be talking about uh, the use of illusion, uh, introducing illusion in the middle years through the use of uh, QR code scanning and generating in a scavenger hunt. Basically, I create a series of clues uh, using various forms of illusion, uh, creates QR codes that the kids use the iPads or iPhones to read, and they work in pairs or groups of three, try to decipher where on campus they're supposed to go based on the clues. They go there, they take a picture, they come back, they get the next clue. Language art focus, of course, it is illusion, um, but we're also working on critical thinking. Um, the clues are written in such a way that kids also have to focus on specific word choice I'm including in there to make them go in a certain direction or, or think in terms of uh, a negative quantity of a certain factor. Uh, critical reading, of course, uh, some of the kids have issues basically reading the clues because they don't focus on all the components. Also, uh, when they go and research these uh, bits and pieces of illusion, they have to work on um, their ability to scan quickly uh, an internet site. Also, uh, identifying punctuation of titles, be it a poem, novel, and the borrowed usage of uh, text in the form of quotations and illusions themselves. Fundamental text skills they worked on, uh, advanced internet research uh, sites, uh, how to uh, enter your data into Google, more efficient uh, proper way of course using iPads and the camera on the iPads using QR scanners um, command F is a good one to re-emphasize here in terms of looking for keywords on web pages and uh, one of the clues was in Japanese and they had to decipher what the script was and then they use uh, Google Translate to get their clue in English so like I said I had them in Paris um, and also another time I had them in groups of three each kid had um, an iPad or an iPhone at least I had uh, half of the group was with one. Sometimes all three of the kids being have had to, you know, brought their own device. Um, I like them to have at least one computer. I found uh, it was nice to divvy up or delegate the responsibility and the research of the illusion and the clues worked a little bit quicker with the actual uh, Mac laptop. Um, I flipped it a bit. I created a video uh, ahead of time. I asked them to watch it at home. I asked them to open up all the hot links on here and just gave them a multitude of examples of illusion. Um, they liked it. Uh, it. It wasn't anything too terribly new, but it did give them a couple of uh, an ideas about how the uh, lesson was going to work. Basically, again, they, they scan the clues. I have them on my laptop. I even projected them on the screen in another class. Um, you could do this lots of ways. I even, at one point in time, uh, printed out the QR codes and put them physically on the places where I wanted them to go, and they got the clues there. Um, that was problematic because then you're, you know, you're expecting other people not to take these clues down. So... Um, I think there's lots of ways you can do it. Um, what I've decided on is I give them the clues in class, they come up, they read them, and then they go off in their pairs or groups and discuss and research in a sort of quiet manner um, what they think it is they're looking at and where they think they're going to go. Um, I have a little entrance in my room where they come, we call it the office, they step in there, and they must justify you know, where they think on campus or, or who it is they're going to take a picture of. And then I ask them what bit about the clue or what was the illusion and how they kind of got to that. So I ask them to you know, work backwards and justify their thought process. So they go there, and if it's a picture of the counselor or if it's a picture of our uh, IT specialist or if it's a picture of the football pitch, they take a picture of it, they come back, they show it to me. Tom, congratulations, and they go on to their next clue. If you have a QR scanner, you could read this, and this is what would pop up. Um, there's a couple ways with the generators. Um, been using this one uh, right here. It's called Kaiwa. Uh, the link's at the bottom of this post. Um, there's two ways you can give them a website. I tried to use it with Google Docs as well just to see how it worked, but of course, um, you know. It, if you can avoid using the internet with that in terms of the iPads or the iPhones and uh, connectivity, it's better. So just I would suggest you put the option of the text so when it reads, it just immediately pops up in the uh, their apparatus. This is the clue that popped up for this one. And of course, they should have Googled the quotations and they would have uh, gotten this the entire poem called Florence Nightingale. There's a double illusion in this because a lot of the kids didn't know who Florence Nightingale was. So they had to uh, search her. And of course, the final product would have been they would have gone and take a picture of our uh, doctor uh, nurse's office and came back.
they loved it. The, it was a game. They got a little competitive. Um, it was a really nice opportunity for some of the kids um, to really show just some very nice critical and analytical thinking, which, you know, it's there in class, but this was a very isolated case, and it was a really fun lesson. Um, they keep wanting to do it, and it's also nice just to have these, you know, 10, 15 extra clues there because of scheduling's an issue or, you know, towards the end of the year, you're having, uh, you know, some <laughs> doubts about what to do in the last couple of days of school. It is truly academic and, and they really do like it.